Our atmosphere is teeming with electricity, even when we have fair weather conditions. And historically, there has been great interest in tapping this resource. When Benjamin Franklin conducted his famous experiment, it was a monumental feat that developed our understanding of electricity. This interest in tapping atmospheric electricity continued through Cavallo and later Nikola Tesla. To this day, scientists publish documents of making use of this resource of energy or theorize the possible negative consequences of doing so. In this video, we will cover all you need to know about atmospheric electricity, so stay tuned. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire people towards engineering for a better, more sustainable world. Subscribe today to get the updates of all our latest videos. Many of you might have seen videos of simple experiments on YouTube. A conducting wire is tethered to a balloon or kite with a needle point antenna made out of pencils. The other end of the wire is pushed into the earth. As the balloon or kite reaches a certain height, it creates enough electricity in the wires to light up a small LED or run a small electrostatic motor. This indicates the presence of electricity in our atmosphere which can be harnessed. But can it be harnessed on a commercial scale? Let's find out. As you know, our atmosphere can be divided into several layers. The topmost layer is called the ionosphere. This layer is a shell of electrons and electrically charged atoms and molecules that surround the Earth, stretching from a height of about 50 kilometers to more than a thousand kilometers. It exists primarily due to ultraviolet radiation from the sun. We sometimes are made aware of its presence through auroras that form, even when solar flares and cosmic rays strike the particles in our atmosphere, they result in shaving off the electron from their respective molecules. The ionosphere is very loosely packed, which reduces the probability of ions to recombine and neutralize. In fact, the positively charged ions are constantly traveling downwards as they are attracted by the reverse polarity of Earth. Therefore, even in the lower atmosphere, these positive ions can be captured. However, the charged particles lose their potential as they come close to the ground level. Note that an average potential difference of 100 volts per meter exists for charged particles with rising altitude from the ground. It has to be mentioned though that in most locations, this value is much lower in reality. The seemingly high altitude potential of 100 volt per meter exists because it is propped up by much larger values of altitude potential that exists during thunderstorms or gray weather. So this tells us that the higher we capture our particles and the more of them we capture, the greater the power we will have. It should be noted that the flux of electron is just 10 picoamps per square meter. That is, if we had a collector that is a square meter in area, there would be just 10 picoamps of current passing through it. Because the density of the flow of charged particles is pretty low, we have to make up for it by capturing them higher up. This can be achieved either by building a structure with a large collecting antenna at top or by sending a balloon that is tethered to a wire. And over time, there have been numerous attempts at doing so. Some of them have been very successful. It must be understood that even if we collect electrons with a potential difference of 100,000 volts, but the current is merely 20 picoamps, then the total power we will capture is just two microwatts. So the charge collection rate also has to be improved. This is done by creating a strong magnetic field around the collector that attracts other charges, which has been done in the past. For example, as early as 1925, the Estonian inventor Hermann Plossen built on Tesla's idea of wheelwork of nature. He proposed that instead of using heavy metallic netting as collectors attached to a single air balloon of non-conducting material, which are liable to be torn and are permeable to the gas, it is better to use metallic balloon collectors. This is because metallic cases are impenetrable to helium and hydrogen. They also represent large metallic weatherproof collecting surface. He even used flame to collect atmospheric charges at higher rate. In fact, Plossen claimed to have obtained power in the order of kilowatts through his apparatus, from 0.72 kilowatts to 3.4 kilowatts to be precise. Some modern day investigations have been done using graphite graphene wires, which claim to increase the charge collection density by providing millions of needle points in a very small area. 
If we couple these graphite graphene collectors with modern day high altitude balloons that can go above 50 kilometers, or in other words, they can reach the foot of the ionosphere, then we might have a feasible electricity generator. In the recent past, a company called Cephe announced that it's going to bring down the cost of electricity to just three cents per unit. Using its patented technology, the company started the Harmony 3 project, although it remains to be seen if this technology would bear any fruit. However, the interest in tapping atmospheric electricity never wanes as the idea of omnipresent, readily available electricity is very lucrative. Another aspect that should be understood is that in fair weather condition, the atmosphere is predominantly positively charged, whereas in dark cloud conditions, the atmosphere is negatively charged. In both cases, the charge buildup seeks to reach the ground. One reason that atmospheric electricity has eluded us is because very little of it is known as an energy resource. If you look at solar and wind, we find maps for solar and even wind energy resources. You will find next to no such information on the presence of atmospheric electricity in your locality or during a particular weather event. Things, however, are changing. The NCAR, or the National Center for Atmospheric Research, has started a project that is actively looking into what they call the global electric circuit. Part of the project is to see how the atmospheric electricity is generated. It is for the first time that a multidisciplinary research is carried out specifically for atmospheric electricity that involves space physics, geosciences, electrostatics, and chemistry. This project will help to map out the pattern of atmospheric electricity, which will be useful for harnessing it. Also, if we were to harness this electricity on a large scale, then to determine any possible changes to the Earth's magnetic field would be crucial. Our geomagnetic field is an important factor that protects us from the damages that could be done by solar flares. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from this video, do give it a thumbs up. This helps the channel go further. Thank you for your attention.